We're going to walk you through the anatomy of a sewing machine. Now don't worry if some of this stuff doesn't make any sense at all at this stage. We are going to be going through what all of the functions do individually in later lessons. So this is just a very quick overview of what everything on the machine is. So let's start with power. All machines will have a power cable because the machine runs on electricity. Some machines come with a power cable where the foot pedal is attached to the same unit that goes into the side of the machine. And some machines like this one have separate ones. So this is my power and this is my foot pedal. Then above that here I have the switch. Now this is the power switch that turns it on and off. Not only does that operate the power of the machine and the um, light on the machine, but it also operates the foot pedal. So without the machine on, you won't be able to do any sewing unless you're doing it manually by the hand wheel. The hand wheel is this big wheel up here. When you turn this, it operates the main mechanism of the machine. Let me turn this back here so you can see what I mean. The hand wheel makes the needle down here move up and down. It also moves the take-up lever up and down. This keeps it threaded nice and evenly without tangles. Turning the hand wheel will also operate the feed dogs which are these jagged blades situated underneath the feet. These help move the fabric through the machine. All of these items are operated by the hand wheel. Continuing on the top of the machine, this is the bobbin winder. You pop your bobbin onto here and then that will help you to wind the bobbin on the machine. We'll go through that in more detail later. This is your bobbin buffer, and that stops your bobbin from becoming overfilled. Moving on to here, we have a spool holder. Let me just turn the machine so that you can see. On this machine, we have what's called a horizontal spool holder. Now on some machines, a vertical spool holder will sit upright on the machine. If you have a horizontal one, you will also have what's called a spool cap. This will keep the thread on the machine and stop it from coming off when the machine is moving. Also on the top here, you will probably see you have some threading guides. These are diagrams that are on most machines to tell you how you're supposed to thread your machine. Obviously your manual will tell you all of that and we're going to go through it in detail as well. But these little diagrams just help remind you the key parts of threading the machine. Up here we have a little round disc which helps with threading the bobbin ready for winding. And then this here is a thread guide that also keeps the machine running nicely and the threads not getting tangled. The final thing on the top of this machine is something not all sewing machines have. This is presser foot pressure and it determines how tightly your foot clamps your fabric. Adjusting this will move the pressure up or down. Moving down to the front of the machine, on this machine, we have an LCD display. This, you use the LCD in conjunction with these arrows to help you select the stitch you want to use. On some machines, that selector is just a dial and you turn it to select the stitch that you want using the images or numbers represented there. So moving further down the machine, this bit here is our presser foot and the presser foot clamps the fabric and holds it in place to make sure that you can sew straight lines. 
and that is controlled by a lever just inside here and that lifts the foot up and down. So obviously you lift it up to pop your fabric under and you need to have it down when you're sewing. Press the feet can be changed and we'll be showing you that in more detail later on. Now around here, the metal part is called the needle plate and there are some markings on here to make sure that you're sewing the right seam allowance, which again we'll cover in more detail. In this little window here is where our bobbin is hiding. So I've been talking about the bobbin when we were referring to the top of the machine and the bobbin itself is actually this little plastic fella here. He lives inside the machine and for an, a sewing machine to operate correctly you need two threads. One comes from the top of the machine from the spool holder either horizontal or vertical at the top and the other one comes from the bobbin that sits in this little window here. Now your machine might be a bit different. This machine is called a top loading machine and that means that the bobbin is loaded into the top just here. On some machines you have a front loading machine and there you would just have a little flap here that you open up and you'd have a little door that inside has a shuttle that contains your bobbin. It doesn't matter which one you have, they operate in exactly the same way. The threading is marginally different, but your manual will explain to you exactly how you should thread a front-loaded bobbin. The other thing that's useful to know on the front of this machine is that this little plastic bit here slides off. This is called your free arm and it allows you to sew circular things because it creates space under the machine so that you can feed something circular onto it and sew in the round. The other important things to find on your machine are sometimes small buttons like this machine which is computerised but they can be much bigger buttons on machines that aren't computerised. So this button here you can see it has a U on it. If you imagine a U turn that's what that symbol represents and this is your reverse button. Reverses are used to lock your stitches and we'll be talking you all through that shortly. But on your machine it may well be a big lever over here that you can pull down and, and that will help you reverse. Just below here on this machine we have a start stop button. Now this is only related to computerised machines because you can manually start and stop your machine without using the foot pedal if you wish. The other buttons that are useful on this machine, which is a Janome 230DC, is that here we have our needle up and down button. Pressing that moves the needle down or brings it back up again. And then this little target here is an, an auto lock function. So you would use this to secure your stitches instead of needing to do a reverse. Finally on this machine, and this is not available on any machines that aren't computerised um, and is a very handy function to have if you're a beginner sewer, is this slider here which controls your speed. If you want to limit your foot pedal so that you can sew at the slowest of speeds, you can move that all the way down. And if you're ready for Grand Prix speeds, then